This is section 10.3 on its own hypothesis test for two variances and two standard deviations. If you remember back in section 8.1, we did the unpaired t-test, and there are actually two different formulas for the unpaired t-test, um, and that's actually for the uh, critical, uh, or the test statistic for the unpaired t-test. There were two different uh, formulas. One formula was based if the uh, standard deviations or variances are significantly different than each other, and the other one is if the variances or standard deviations are not significantly different from each other. So this is the same example one from section 8.1 where it, we had the experimental group that took uh, some sort of herbal treatment, and they had a score, uh, average score of 77 with a standard deviation of 15, and they sampled 95 people there. And then the control group, which didn't take the herbal treatment to improve memory, you sampled 105 people there, standard deviation of 12, and their average memory score was 73. Now what we want to do here is do the actual test to see if the variances are significantly different or not. Now to do that, you go to the Excel sheet that's called 1 and 2S. Well, it does one standard deviation and one variance um, hypothesis test here and if you do a hypothesis test for uh, it does a hypothesis test for variances if you're given standard deviations remember you have to square those it has a place over here where you can put in raw data and copy the values from these two groups over and down here it does confidence intervals for uh, a single population variance or standard deviation and below that it does hypothesis tests for uh, two variances. Now on this problem, we're checking to see if there's any significant difference between the two variances. And it's said to run it at the 0.05 alpha level. So we're doing a two-tailed test because of any significant difference. We're not checking to see if one is bigger or one is smaller. We're checking to see if there's any difference. So that means either uh, variance for group one could be greater than or less than uh, group two. So the sample size from my experimental group was 95, and the variance is 225, and that's because it gives you the standard deviation, but we have to put in the variance, and the variance is the standard deviation squared. So how I got that 225 is I just typed in equals 15 squared, and that tells me what my sample variance from group 1 is. From group 2, my sample size was 105 with a standard deviation of 12, and 12 squared is 144. When you put this information in, you get your test statistic F, and the way that test statistic is actually calculated is it takes the um, variance, the larger variance, divided by the smaller variance. That's all there is to it. If you take 225 divided by 144, you get 1.565, and that's your test statistic. Now, the critical value you'd have to look up on a table if you weren't going to do it with Excel, and that's very difficult to do because, uh, well, first of all, you'd have to use a F table, which is not included in the book, but you could get that online. And one reason it's not included with the book is because there's a different F table for every alpha level, and also they don't give you every uh, degrees of freedom or sample size that's possible. Like, for example, with us, uh, the uh, it says it here that the... Uh, uh, the alpha level 0.05, the numerator degrees of freedom is the one less than the sample size for your larger uh, standard deviation or larger variance. Uh, well, the larger standard deviation is uh, from group, let's take a look at this, the larger standard deviation or larger variance is from group 1. So I need one less than my sample size from group 1, and that would be my numerator degrees of freedom, which would be 94. The denominator degrees of freedom is one less than uh, the smaller standard deviation uh, sample size. And the smaller standard deviation was 12, that sample size was 105, and 105 minus 1 is 104. But if you try to look up numerator degrees of freedom across the top to be 94, you can't find it. There's 60 and there's 120. It doesn't give you every value. It doesn't even give you close to every value. And if you try to look for the denominator degrees of freedom of 104, again, that's not listed. So the closest value you can find to it is this one, which is 1.35. Uh, this one is, you know, it's going to be somewhere in this general ball, ballpark around here. But the nice thing is is that we get the exact critical value of 1.48, and you can see that's higher than this one. But, uh, well, it's actually higher than this one, but less than this one. So it, all we could know without Excel is that it's somewhere around here. 
But with Excel, we get the exact critical value. The p-value, we get that too, the exact p-value. And then since our uh, p-value is less than this alpha level, we, re we would reject this at the 0.05. And that is the most significant alpha level we could go because if we go 0.01, we wouldn't reject the null hypothesis. So our summary for this problem is... Uh, let me go up here where we have the summary. I think we have it here. Therefore, at the 0.05 alpha level, we are able to show that the standard deviations are significantly different. And uh, if we try to run this at the 0.01 alpha level, the standard deviations would not be significantly different. And that's why back in section 8.1, uh, the p-value changed when we went from the 0.05 to the 0.01 alpha level. Because at the 0.01 alpha level, the, st the standard deviations are not significantly different, meaning that you use one form formula for the difference of uh, two means back in section 8.1, and at the 0.05, the standard deviations are significantly different, which means you use the other formula. So uh, all this is kind of done in the background, but it's, uh, that's the reason why the formula has changed back in section 8.1. Uh, the summary, again, let's see. Uh, well, I think we have it here at the, uh, and now we want to set, summarize a two-tailed test in the direction of the rejection. So since we rejected the null hypothesis and the uh, standard deviation for group one or the variance for group one is greater than the variance for group two, we could say at the 0.05 alpha level, I was able to show that the variance for group one is significantly greater than the variance for group two. On example two, it says a bank manager is designing a system that is intended to decrease the variance of the time customers wait in line that, uh, for the ATM. Under the old system, a random sample of 11 had a variance of 144. Under the new system, uh, a random sample of 21 had a variance of 100. Is there enough evidence to convince the manager to switch to the new system? So we're thinking that the old system, uh, see it says under the old system, that's our group one, would be greater than this new system, which is supposed to decrease the variance. So group one greater than group two, we're going to do a right tail test. And so we put our information in the one and two S sheet uh, right here during the right tail test. The old system, there was 11 sampled with a variance of 144. The new system, 21, with a variance of 100. This variance is less than this variance, but is it significantly less? No, the p-value is 0.23, which is greater than this. Uh, alpha level. So at any alpha level, I was unable to show that the variance under the new system is less than the variance under the old system. Now you could have ran this as a left tail test, but you would have had to have the new system as group one and the old system as group two, and you would get the same results. On example three, a claim is made about the standard deviation for the value of stock A is the same as the standard deviation for stock B. You sample uh, stock A over a 30-day period and find the standard deviation to be 3.5, and you sample stock B over a 31-day period and find the standard deviation for, of 5.7. Uh, we're looking for any significant difference in the standard deviation, just checking to see uh, you know, if they're the same as it didn't say greater than or less than. So we're going to do a two-tailed test, and the number of days that you sample it is your sample sizes. And so we have a, uh, I'm going to run this at the 0.05 alpha level, and at the 30-day period, the variance was 12.96. Uh, uh, now, how did I get the 12.96? Well, it gave me a standard deviation of 3.6, so I just did equals 3.6 squared. Here's 31 is the sample size for the second group, and the uh, variance is 32.49 because the standard deviation was 5.7, and 5.7 squared is this right here. And I do get a rejected null hypothesis at the 0.05 alpha level, but I would not get the re uh, rejected null hypothesis at the 0.01 alpha level because my p-value is 0.015, which is greater than 0.01. But that p-value is less than an alpha level 0.05. So at the 0.05 alpha level, the variances are significantly different. But to be specific, I could, uh, since this variance is less than this, I can say that uh, at the 0.05 alpha level, the variance or standard deviation for stock A is significantly less than the variance or standard deviation for stock B. So in other words, Stock A isn't jumping around as much as stock B. We'll stop it right there.